Hello friends and welcome to Dr. Ankur's Dental Lectures. I'm Dr. Ankur Sharma and today we are going to talk about pathways through which pain sensation is perceived by the brain in case of fractures of mandible. This is further to our discussion about the case winnate number one. Let us first talk about the causes of pain. Causes of pain in such an injury. The foremost cause of pain is the nociceptive stimulus that caused the injury in the first place. There may also be a continuous nociceptive stimulus like a broken bone irritating the surrounding tissue or a broken tooth. Additionally, injuries are usually accompanied with muscle spasm as well as tissue ischemia which also contribute to pain. Whereas immediate pain is caused by nociceptive stimulus, the prolonged pain, which usually occurs after the injury, is caused by the chemical mediators like bradykinin, histamine, serotonin, acetylcholine, etc. released by the inflamed tissues. These causes of pain lead to commencement of excitation of peripheral sensory pain fibers that start sending nerve impulses. Now, there are two types of these peripheral pain fibers. The fast A-delta fibers that carry impulses at a velocity of 6 to 30 meter per second and the slower C fibers that carry impulses at a lesser velocity of 0.5 to 2 meter per second. These fibers carry impulses towards brain through two central pain pathways the fast or neospinal thalamic tract that entirely consists of A-delta fibers and the paleospinal thalamic tract that consists mainly of C-fibers. The fibers of a neothalamic tract relay through the lamina first of the dorsal horn or spinal cord before crossing over to the opposite side and moving upward to the brain. This tract terminates at three areas in the brain, that is, the reticular area of the brain stem, the ventrobasal complex in the thalamus, and the posterior nucleus group in the thalamus. On the other hand, the fibers of paleospinal thalamic tract first relay through lamina 2 and 3 of dorsal horn of the spinal cord and then to lamina 5 before crossing over to the other side and descending towards the brain, thus forming the anterolateral pathway, whose fibers terminate at the thalamus, reticular nuclei, tectal area, and preaqueductal gray. However, in case of facial pain, a special pathway known as ventral triterminothalamic pathway transmits sensory nerve impulses to the brain. It is composed of four cranial nerves, that is, cranial nerve number 5, 7, 9, and 10, and their ganglia, namely triterminal, geniculate, petrosal, and superior ganglia, respectively. The fibers enter the brain at pons and form a descending spinal thalamic tract that terminates into spinal terigeminal nucleus where the fibers synapse. The postsynaptic fibers decuset and ascend via medial lemniscus to reach the thalamus where the synapse again at the ventroposteromedial nucleus and thereafter relay to the corona radiator and primary somatosensory cortex, where the fibers synapse for the third time. So, as we can see, the pain sensation from the face is transmitted through a special pain pathway that consists of both types of fibers from various anatomical regions. This makes facial pain poorly localized. So, and that was 
regarding the pain pathways. The assignment related to this lecture is on the differences between trigeminal and spinothalamic pathways. Kindly mail me your assignment at drdr.ankurlectures at gmail.com. I received last lecture's assignments and will soon be putting winning assignment on my blog. I hope that my lectures have been useful for you. Kindly keep me updated with your feedback. Also, visit my website www.dentallectures.net and like and share this video with your friends. Next lecture will be on pathological basis of inflammation. I hope you liked today's lecture. Thank you, happy learning and bye-bye.